Fantasy Edge with Jonathan Chan, Kevin Quo, Richard Seville. Hello and welcome to the Fantasy Edge. I am Richard Seville of FantasySixPack.net and joining me shortly, Jonathan Chan, also of FantasySixPack.net. No Kevin this week and no Kevin next week. Uh, we, I don't know if we'll maybe get someone to fill in. <clears throat> get one of the uh, fantasy six pack uh, people on here next week. Maybe this, maybe this Davis Penn guy. I don't know. Uh, he's one of the new guys. He's very chatty on our uh, fantasy Slack channel, so I might might keep him in mind. But uh, eh, maybe it's just us again next week. But uh, Jono, uh, we both play in the fantasy six pack league, and uh, looks like you're going to get the top score of the week. Uh, your team is on a surge. I lost last week, didn't I? This week, I'm like 99 percent sure I lost last week, but. I'll take the win this week. It was against Joe Bond. Yes, it was. Well, our he, fearless he, leader. He, he he was dealing with some injuries, but I'll take the <coughs> win. My entire bench is on by right now. Uh, I didn't have Kyler this week. I didn't have Hopkins. I didn't have McLaurin. So I'll take the win. But it wasn't just a win. I mean, it was one of the I think <coughs> highest score of the week. Yeah, I had and Delvin it. Cook. That's it's not not due to any actual skill or moves on my end. I had just had Delvin Cook. <laughs> Delvin Cook. Yes, yep. uh, if you started <laughs> Delvin Cook, you. You're uh, doing all right. But if you started Wayne Galvin today uh, or Ronald Jones, you might not be as happy because it looks like uh, Leonard Fournette uh, is taking over the uh, the backfield uh, tonight, Jono. Yeah, uh, Jones fumbled in the first quarter, and I haven't seen him since. So this uh, may be a... Uh... Maybe just a rep for the rest of the first half, but we'll have to see what happens in the second. I hate dog housing. Uh, the way the way coaches dog house. I mean, Bill check was bad for that, but I think well, all don't coaches don't fumble the ball. Well, I know, I know, but well, don't uh, fumble. I know, don't fumble, but uh, you know, Chris Carson <laughs> fumbled, but uh, you know, Pete Carroll still puts him in back in there. So uh, anyway, we are back. Uh, you take a look at some of the news uh, since the Sunday games. Uh, George Kittle, broken bone in the foot, out for the fantasy season, probably. Uh, I mean, it, the, the news is, the early prognosis is eight weeks, which definitely puts him uh, out until, uh, well, until December. I mean, dude, you're not playing fantasy. Uh, you're in the fantasy playoffs by then, and I don't, I don't think he's going to be back, is he, Jono? Uh, eight weeks. I mean, it, he, if he, even if he beats his projection, he comes back. Is he going to be 100%? But if Kittle plays, you have to put him in your lineup. But yeah, theoretically, eight weeks will take him to the you know the fantasy playoffs, and then you're or just after the fantasy playoffs, and you're you know you're pushing your luck there. Yeah, it was a crazy play too. It was, it was a big play that he ha- that it happened on. He he made a big pass catch. The the Forty ers were well behind, and they were I guess they were trying to rally back. I guess and it didn't uh, happen. Actually, they did rally back. Uh, points wise but they were just too far behind to get you know even get into the to the point where you because of russell was just russell um jordan wilkins uh jono uh um, suddenly the colts you know seem to have an unsettled backfield jonathan taylor injury cited as the reason now i'm not sure about that because jonathan taylor even when he was in there didn't seem well actually do you know to tell you the truth throughout this whole season i really am not seeing the jonathan taylor we sort of were kind of expecting after marlon mack went out yeah taylor's been very very pedestrian uh and it just it culminated this week this was supposed to be his breakout week against the lions uh following a bye and he came out and had you know averaged two yards a carry and got vultured at the goal line by wilkins uh, or he got stuffed at the one and then on the very next play, Wilkins scored, and then Trey Burton was given a carry at the at the goal line. So I just, Taylor's just not being used, and can't really trust him at this point. Yeah, and so that obviously means uh, Jordan Wilkins. Uh, we'll be talking about him when the waivers come up. I'm, I'm sure. Um, Jamal Williams. He had close contact with the with AJ Dillon, who was uh, who is out uh, with uh, COVID nineteen. So it could be that Jamal Williams might not play if Aaron well, I don't know who they who they bring in I guess they bring in Dexter Williams does he uh, or somebody if Aaron Jones remains on I can't see Aaron Jones remaining out another week especially when the week before I mean he was a game time decision I mean what is it going to be what's the problem with Jones I don't know what what it is about Jones I don't think he's he's not that seriously hurt is he uh calf injuries can be tricky because it's uh 
pretty easy to re-aggravate, especially for a running back. And if it does get re-aggravated, then he's looking at major time missed. They uh, they were very careful. Devontae Adams held him out, uh, you know, against his wishes. We all knew uh, know about the tweet he he put yeah. out there. So they're gonna make sure, even if they don't have Jamal Williams and uh, and AJ Dillon. They're going to make sure Jones is completely, completely healthy before they bring him back in. Yeah. So I guess that would mean then, uh, is uh, Dexter Williams a pickup or do we have to wait on that? Uh, I mean, you have to wait and see what the, he's, he's not worth blowing any, any budget on for sure. Um, Cause right. Jamal Williams test is not going to come back uh, fast enough. I don't think that, uh, that you'll be able to actually do it for Tuesday night, yeah. but uh, who knows? We're talking about this Monday night, and he can get a test done tomorrow afternoon. So who knows? Well, the but, thing is, is that I mean, I don't even know uh, the measurements of Dexter. Williams. Dexter Williams is kind of a last year sort of. Uh, he sort of was in your mind last year. You kind of put on got put on the back burner this year with AJ Dillon joining the team, and and Dexter Williams sort of you know. Uh, I guess he was just, I don't know whether he was practice squad or what he was, but I don't know his, is he a big back? Is he a small back? I, I can't remember. Uh, uh, I'm going to say he's not a back worth adding. That's going to be my <laughs> contribution to this. <laughs> All right. Uh, I I'll don't remember anything there. about Dexter Williams, All so right. that'll be my contribution. Still, it's a name you got to, it's a name you got to remember if this, if this Jamal Williams story. Uh, he's 5'11", 212. He was a sixth so round pick last uh, season. He has five career carries. Uh, right. Let's yeah. So he's yeah. So he's hmm. ah, interesting. Anyways, Javon Wims. Uh, this was kind of one of the the dark moments of Week Eight. Uh, he threw a punch at uh, C.J. Gardner Johnson, just like slapped his helmet or, bat, or batted his helmet, and then and then gave it a proper punch like afterwards. And it's like, why did he do that? I mean, like, come on now. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna risk your career like out of just. I think there was words before the the play and uh, everybody. You know, he just made a spectacle of himself and he got thrown out of the game. And now he could be facing a, a fine and suspension and all things. Matt Nagy uh, apparently is a coach that uh, doesn't put up with this sort of thing, and uh, and it's. Probably even if he they don't get a suspension, he doesn't get a suspension. He's going to be in the doghouse. I mean, he's not a I, he's kind of a sleeper, or a deep sleep. Well, he's not really. A, nah, I don't even think he's even a deep sleeper. But you just don't like. Well, he, he was suspended too. two games today. He he got two games for the for the punch. All right. So, but I think it go further than that. But, uh, quite a highlight there. I just, just I was actually sitting there stunned when I saw him because because uh, Gardner Johnson was just standing there. <laughs> Not, you know, there was no words at that time. I think that it was the play before that just whims couldn't get it out of his head. Anyways, uh, Gardner Minshew, um, the, one of the reasons he hasn't been playing so well is because uh, his thumb. And uh, I think that explains a lot because we've noticed that Gardner hasn't been really been playing very well lately. So it kind of, uh, it is showing up in his hand. I guess he was hiding it because he wanted to just keep playing. Players do. But uh, it finally came out that Gardner Minshew just, uh, his thumb is bothering him. So I have to say, thank goodness they're not going to put in Mike Glennon and, the, and they're going to prefer to <laughs> <laughs> groom Jake Luton. But are we kind of worried about DJ Shark and, and the crew? Um, yes, because uh, we saw what happened to the Dallas weapons. Regardless of how good the actual receivers are, a QB can, uh, can tank their value. But yeah. I will say... Jacksonville just has a way of producing excellent garbage time receivers, as we saw with Bortles and Allen Robinson and Allen Hearns a few years ago. Mm. So if you know if they fall behind the Texans in Week Nine and then Green Bay in Week Ten, I'm sure like Lavisca Chano and Chark and Keelan Cole are gonna maybe not all of them at once, but some of them will have nice garbage time games. It's, it's just gonna be tough to figure out who. Yeah, I tend to think that uh, they want to keep the short passing game. So um, I don't know. They're all kind of they're all kind of deep threats except for Chenault. So I think maybe Chenault, maybe probably. But I think the 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 big winner, of course, is probably going to be James Robinson because his role doesn't change. He, he's kind of he's a very under the radar uh, RB one this year, and it, it's kind of weird because he uh, he's he's not he's he doesn't put up a lot of big highlights or anything. But I don't know. Every time I look at his that's his yardage there. 
and there's touchdowns there, and there's and he's receiving now. And so uh, what's going to happen with him? Uh, um, he's a bit of a he's a bit of an odd character in in fantasy this year, but uh, he's producing. This is all you can say. So uh, other news: uh, Kenny Galladay. Kenny Galladay had a hip injury. So now um, now we had a brief discussion about this. Um, uh, Kevin, who uh, is uh, one of the hosts of this show, he um, traded Marvin Jones for Tua, and it kind of raised a few eyebrows in the, in our league because we thought that Marvin Jones was a bit of a, and especially what happened after what happened, Kevin probably regrets it now because Marvin. I mean, he made the trade prior to the Galladay injury, so yes, I know that. I know can't he did. hate on that. No, I can't hate on that. But uh, but as it turned out, it's almost like you know you can't. When when you can put a foot wrong, you can put a foot wrong. <laughs> that was one of the things. But anyways, uh, if Kenny Galladay is out, can we tr- can we put at least put a little bit of trust into Marvin Jones again? Uh, I wouldn't. The word is not trust. The word is hopeful optimism. Because theoretically, yes, Marvin Jones should be the you know the wide receiver one there, but he didn't really show much in weeks one and two when Galladay was hurt. Uh, he was not, you know, reliable, and yeah, he's come back the last couple of weeks. Um, but as the wide receiver one in weeks one and two, he caught a combined eight passes for seventy-eight yards uh, over the two games. So he wasn't used a ton, and now he caught, you know, this week uh, he's going to be a big waiver ad because he caught two touchdowns, but he only caught three passes for thirty-nine yards. So I don't know. Uh, how sustainable that's going to be if he's not putting up the yardage and you're relying on a touchdown. Hmm. Um, I mean, they do it, the Lions do get the Vikings. So, for all we know, that can be a complete shootout because the Vikings' defense is trash. So. Yeah, and, uh, well, and and so is the, the, the Detroit defense against the running backs. Uh, uh, I think they, they're one of the teams that allow the most fantasy points to running backs, so... We could see a little bit more of Dalvin Cook again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this time he'll actually match the, uh, the the Jamal Charles five touchdown game. He almost had it this time. This time he'll actually match him. Mm. Uh, now we didn't get to this news because we were on a bye week. The podcast was on a bye week last week, and OBJ uh, is out for the season. Um, but some further news has developed since that time, and. Uh, it could be that OBJ is moving on from the Browns next season. He won't be playing for the Browns in 2021. Um, if he doesn't play for the Browns, well, I guess we can't even can't even begin to speculate where he'd go. Uh, but uh, let's let's talk about OBJ's value in the open market, John. Uh, where do you think it stands? Uh, I mean, he's still a good receiver. Maybe he's not like super elite, elite like he was in New York, but. He still shows flashes of being, you know, a good receiver. It's just maybe the scheme in Cleveland doesn't, you know, isn't helping him out. Maybe he doesn't have the rapport with Baker, but I think wherever he, he's going to be worth a bit, probably less than he was before, but obviously teams are going to be looking, looking at acquiring him. So, yeah, like, uh, do you think he's worth, uh, do you think he's worth a first round pick? <laughs> I don't think probably he is. Not. I don't think he's worth a first round pick. I don't think any team's going to trade a first round pick for OB. Uh, they might, I don't even think they'll trade a second round pick for OBJ. <laughs> is that, is that, is that bad? Is that a bit harsh? Uh, it depends on the team. I think somebody will give up a second rounder. Maybe not a first. Well, the Raiders got a first for Amari Cooper, but he's he wasn't coming off a torn ACL. So yeah, second sounds about right, depending on the team. Uh, I think it's I think it's tight. I think it's tight for a second. I think a third is pretty safe for sure, uh, and maybe another player. I don't know, whoever. But we'll have to see what happens. But next year is next year. We're we're starting with this year. And and speaking of this year, we got to see our first look at Tua. Tonga Vailoa. Tonga Vailoa. I hate that. Anyways, uh, we got nice. He got. He got. He got very nice. Uh, nice numbers. You know, like ninety-three yards and a touchdown. The Dolphins still won the game mainly because of do- mainly because of defense and special teams. But uh, you know, it, it's. It's really not, uh, apparently, that start for the rookie is the worst start since, uh, I, I forget the name of the, the player who had a, had a worse, who had a, it was Jared Goff, actually. Jared Goff had a worse, was the, was the other quarterback who had, uh, only Jared Goff had a worse start in his first rookie. Um, now, 
That's kind of weird because I would have guessed, if I was to guess, I would have guessed Haskins to have had a worse uh, first game, but apparently not uh, to a tag level, you know. And when I see it, when I see numbers like 93 yards and one touchdown, it kind of reminds me of, well, it reminds me of a guy from Miami <laughs> who uh, we haven't talked about for a long time, but who was uh, always wanted to be a quarterback, <laughs> um, who was a Heisman winner. Um Tebow, Tebow's not from Miami. What are you talking about? Uh, is it not, not from Miami? No, Tebow's not from Miami. I thought he was from Florida. He's not from Miami. Oh. Uh, uh, what, Florida? I thought he played for Florida. Yeah, he played for Florida. But oh. That's not Miami. Oh, right, right. Of course. I did. I meant, uh, yeah, not the U. Yeah. No, he wasn't. He didn't play for the U. He played, what, he played for the Seminoles? No, he played for the Gators. Oh, the Gators. That's right. The Gators. Right. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, I didn't, that's right. The Gators. Yes, Tebow. He, th- th- those, but 93 yards and a touchdown, that's very Tebow-ish to me. Uh, Miami throwing Tua in for his first career start against Aaron Donald just did. It, that was just kind of dumb. I, I don't know why they decided to do that. Um, experienced quarterbacks have problems against Aaron Donald. I don't see why you would throw in your rookie coming off an injury with no game time in against the best defensive player in the world. It doesn't make any sense, and the results really showed that it was a bad decision. I suppose it was a bad decision. Well, they still won the game, so they kind of lucked out there. But I, I, you know what? Uh, it really kind of shows you how bad the Rams are. I mean, at least Jared Goff. I mean, and that was kind of the weird thing. That's why the, the, the contrast, too. Jared Goff had a worse start than to it. I, I, I got to see what the numbers were. Anyways, uh, uh, we got a few bad sco- uh, bad fantasy scores. We talked about the uh, Cowboys receivers. Uh, Jared Goff, of course, I just mentioned. And John o. Smith. Uh, Jared Goff had 355 yards and a touchdown. Yeah, but uh, fantasy points but, wise. Yeah, I mean he. He had less fantasy points than he had less fantasy points less fantasy points than Taysom Hill. Actually, a lot of uh, quarterbacks had less fantasy points than T- Taysom. Yeah, Hill. Yeah, I mean Wentz had fewer fantasy points than Taysom Hill. I don't. That's eh. you know. there's a uh, Taysom Hill getting the. Uh, can't really qualify him as a QB though, because he's getting the the six point touchdowns instead of the uh, instead of the four point touchdowns. So well, okay. Anyways, uh, the good fantasy uh, players this year, uh, this week was uh, Patrick Mahomes, naturally against the Jets, uh, just bombed them. And uh, DK Metcalf is DK Metcalf. Dalvin Cook, monster game, monster game for your team too. Uh, much to uh, m- much to our fearless leaders' dismay. And uh, Travis Kelsey back on top of the. Uh, of the list so time to uh now that the news is over now we can look at uh, take some observation well, what we learned or what we took away from this week and uh what i took away from this week and, and we or we already talked about jordan wilkins and jonathan taylor but um generally speaking and, and the colts won but the colts uh the colts are bad fair for fantasy i don't see any good colts players that you can trust or or at least or at least just put a sleeper there's really no sleeper things that you really feel good about uh, on the on the Colts and I mean I know Jordan Wilkins is probably going to be a waiver a waiver pickup this week but uh, he's not it's not that he stinks or anything, but it, it just feels like, well, is this really going to be it? Because, I mean, I kind of felt like Naheem Hines. I mean, Naheem Hines is a big game, but I could also see, but the next game, I mean, I, I drafted uh, in, in our league, I drafted Naheem Hines, and and I, you know, I, I held him in the bench for, I don't know, weeks on end, and I finally gave up on him because nothing was happening. Nothing changed. Maybe Maybe something changes now. I don't think so, though. I think this could be just like one of those blips that comes along and then he goes back into the back into the cave. So, but I I just John, there's just no Colts that you can trust in fantasy for none. There's no there's no there's no Colts even though they're winning and they're 5 and 3 I think or something. What are we doing? You're adding Trey Burton. That's really the only <laughs> move. <laughs> Trey you Burton. You can do yeah, adding Trey Burton. That's cold comfort if you ask me. Trey Burton's nothing. <laughs> is that the best you got is Trey Burt? Oh, well, oh, actually. I mean, actually, tight end is a wasteland. Kittle's hurt now. We're going to trust Jordan Reed not to get hurt. Burton's healthy. He's scoring touchdowns. The Colts clearly love to use him everywhere. So, yeah, Trey, you're adding Trey Burton. That, a- that's that's it. Actually, there is one, there is one Colt that, that, that is 
excellent, actually. It's the Colts DST. Colts DST are solid. Yeah, uh, generally speaking, uh, depending on the matchup. I mean, uh, against matchup-proof teams that are <clears throat> that can beat uh, that can match up well against their good defense, but their DST is is fairly solid. And that's probably what's carried them to a five and three record. Okay, Jono, what are you seeing? What are you? Uh, what did uh, you notice this week? My observation's not really a fantasy one. It's just more in general. There have been a lot of high ankle sprains this season to just a lot of big name players like Michael Thomas, uh, Garoppolo twice, uh, Mark Ingram, Kisha McCaffrey, uh, Kenyon Drake. And there's just, yeah, just a ton of these, of these high ankle sprains. And I don't know what it is. Uh, maybe it's the short off season, but yeah, it's really strange. And uh, a lot of big fantasy players or a lot of big, you know, star players in general, just missing a lot of time. And it's, uh, it's throwing off fantasy. I'll say that. Um, I don't really have an explanation for this. I just want to kind of point it out that there have been a lot of high ankle sprains and mm. more than normal, I think. Yeah, there there have been. I think, uh, well, I don't know. You, you, you always get hamstrings, though. The thing that I always hear about is hamstrings. You know, like, like uh, I think, uh, like, Julio had one earlier this season. And toe, toe injuries are are quite common this year too I, I don't know it's a mixed bag but you're right about high ankle sprains yeah i am hearing a lot of about high ankle sprains coming this year yeah that, that, that is a major one but uh but toe and hamstring but they, the, but hamstrings tend to be like always there but uh yeah but but this one on the outside like ankle stuff it's it, it's bad foot injuries just suck because when when your foot hurts you can't play you just cannot play through it because you you gotta run right it's part of the game and it's sort of like your feet are needed and but the thing is is when you gotta when you have sort of like you can play through sort of like you can sort of like play through bad ribs maybe if you're a quarterback if you have a flak jacket on you can play through sore ribs maybe um or any player can um they tend not to though and uh, and but but I will say it's good to know that uh, concussions seem down. I'm not seeing a whole lot of concussions. You touch wood, <laughs> touch wood as I say that. You know, not a lot of concussions. Um, but uh, yeah, the the injury problem. Is there anything else that we notice this week, Jono? Uh, we kind of because we're kind of covering for Kevin a little bit today. So I wonder what what would Kevin Kevin would probably say that I don't know that Baker Mayfield is a terrible quarterback. I don't know. So. Uh, he'd probably talk about Gus Edwards and how good Gus Edwards is. Yeah, Gus Edwards, great. He had a good day. Um, yes. In place of, in place of, guess who, who had a high ankle? Actually, yeah, it was, didn't he have a, a, a high ankle sprain? Mark Ingram, didn't he? Yep, Ingram, high ankle sprain. Uh, Edwards came in. Dobbins had a better day uh, on one fewer carry, but Edwards also had a good day, 80-ish yards and a touchdown. So, yeah, and Ingram's going to miss next week as well. So, Gus Edwards, that's a guy. Yeah, good guy. Always solid too. I mean, even when uh, Ingram was in there, he was he was uh, kind of pundits were saying that he was the quote unquote closer, but uh, not much closing going on. And I I would like to kind of mention <clears throat> Lamar Jackson. I mean, he came out fantasy points wise at the you know he came out the other end okay fantasy points wise and. That's okay, but yeah, I think we're kind of not worried about Lamar, but we kind of where you drafted him, yeah, hey, he should be up there with the Russell Wilsons and Mahomeses. You know what I mean? He shouldn't be down around. Uh, you know, he's out. He's. I think he's. I think he's outside the top ten this year, or if he's, or just inside, perhaps. But he's not. He's not getting those rushing yardages. I think. But, He's doing enough, but he's not giving you like those Mahomes, you know, or, like or what Herbert's doing these days. So uh, I don't know how you feel about Lamar. Uh, I think at some point they'll they'll fix it. I don't think his I don't think the passing numbers are going to be this bad uh, all season. I think mm. they'll make some adjustments in the second half. He'll get better. Uh, to your point, between from weeks one to week week one to week seven, Lamar was QB sixteen. Uh, Herbert was actually ahead of him uh, before this week at QB 15 uh, with less, you know, a fraction of a point higher. But point stands that, you know, the the, the rookie who was undrafted in most leagues outscored, you know, the second, sometimes first-ranked QB. So it's, uh, it's tough. Lamar's only averaging, uh, well, only, but averaging 21 points uh, per game, which is QB 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 
12 QB 12 um, on a per game average. So hmm. just on the, just on the, on the cusp of, you know, QB one. And again, I think he'll improve, but yeah, obviously been a, hu- a massive disappointment thus far. And also, I guess we can also uh, qualify that too, because Ben Roethlisberger actually scored less fantasy points than uh, Lamar this week, if you can believe it. Um, but it was, it was a tough game for both these teams. They, uh, it is kind of sad that both both these teams had to meet up against each other because there's, they tend to have games like this. And uh, so I think it was kind of a tough game for uh, for Steelers players and Steelers uh, uh, and for Ravens players as well. And a lot of people are starting to get uh, starting to get a little upset. And I think even uh, Hollywood Brown is starting to uh, make some noise about his uh, you know his he's starting to squeak about his usage. I think. Yes, he is. He tweeted something today. Yeah, so they're, they're, they're kind of getting a little bit upset about the... So he's a little bit upset about the... You know, because, I mean, he's he's looking at what A.J. Brown and, and uh, D.K. Metcalf are doing. That can't make him too happy. But speaking of uh, A.J. Brown and the Titans, it's time for moving on up. And my moving on up guy is Corey Davis. Actually, uh, Corey Davis is thriving quite well, more so than we've seen him since he came into the league. And uh, we've kind of been waiting. It's, it, it's kind of a Devontae Adams story, uh, Devontae Parker story. Um, one of these late bloomers, uh, you know, like Ted Ginn was kind of a late bloomer. and, and uh, But here we have Corey Davis is actually very ownable and very startable every week. Um, he's right in the, he's right in the mix of wr2 uh, john yeah uh cory davis has shocked the world and has been a very consistent uh receiving option he's he hasn't really had a bust week uh in terms of fantasy points uh if the yardage was low he scored a touchdown and uh, Tannehill clearly trusts him uh you know and the only i guess it hasn't been a problem thus far but the only thing i would be careful of is that the titans aren't gonna lose to the Bengals and be ha- and be forced to throw as often as they were this week uh so davis's volume will probably go down uh behind you know johnny smith and aj brown and obviously derrick henry on for like just competing for touches but thus far he's been good and you can keep counting on him just maybe with a slightly slightly less volume than he saw this week i guess would be the way to put that hmm. Who's moving on up for you? Uh, my moving up is TJ Hawkinson. Uh, we talked about the injury to Kenny Galladay earlier, and Hawkinson saw 10 targets uh, in the loss to the Colts. Uh, Stafford clearly trusts Hawkinson, uh, will toss in the ball consistently, and, I mean, he's already 92% owned in Yahoo, but uh, Hawkinson, that's a tight end one you're looking at with high volume, uh, solid floor, good ceiling as well, as we saw. Uh, he scored four touchdowns this year already. So yeah, Hawkinson is going to be uh, going to be a solid, solid option until Galladay comes back. And he's week to week, so he, we might not see him for a while. All right, you'll have to excuse me if you heard some munching. I, I happened to uh, I happened to look at the Pringles tube, and there were some Pringles still in it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when you have beer, uh, which I have, I'm, uh, actually, you know, we don't do the beer thing here on on like they do on the Fantasy Six Pack Hour. But I'm having my uh, traditional Stella Artois, and uh, I happened to notice that over over on the far side over, over there, I just happened to happen to grab it and then uh, notice that there's some Pringles still in my in the, in the tube, which is kind of nice. And the cap was on too, so it was so they were nice and crisp. <laughs> so anybody uh, anybody who likes Pringles, just uh, you know, put a like on the. <laughs> if you like Pringles, put a put a put a like on that. Pringles go good with beer. They do seriously. They do. They go. They go as good as like I don't know. They talk about beer and pretzels, but uh, you know what goes with good with beer is uh, Pringles. All right. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, moving on down. Well, this uh, you know this is another Titan uh, for. Uh, well, actually, why don't you put, before I go in with the Titan that's going down? Why don't you go with uh, go with who you think and why I'm going to disagree. <laughs> Uh, I'm going with Deontay Johnson in my panic. Not because he's not a talented player, because he is. When he's healthy, he's gets he gets a ton of targets, but he's not healthy. Uh, this is his, what, this is the third game this season where he's left early due to injury. Uh, this time it's a hamstring, which... But he came back. No. He, 
soft tissue injury and they have a, like no he's already hobbled he's left three games this year with a soft tissue injury they're gonna ease him back in he's not gonna go back to getting 15 13 targets not with claypool emerging and and juju getting better like it's it's not they're not gonna throw him out there to do that especially against dallas that's the james connor game i'm not really too worried about uh deontay i think it will bounce back i think this i mean he was questionable last week and he, he fell on the ground and he was hurt and he came back late in the game and uh he was questionable they brought him back and he's yeah he, he gets dinged up players get dinged up i mean it's like maybe he i don't know we'll see the healthy injury reports and then i'll I don't think there's any crow for me to eat here because I hear what you're saying. Deontay Johnson does, uh, he seems to find the the blue tent quite a lot. But, I, you know, he's he's just, you can't, you can't drop him. You gotta keep him. Uh, we're not in the drop category yet. I know we're not in the drop category yet, but you gotta be, uh, but you're right to be wary. You're right to be wary. I, I guess that's fair. But uh, on my end of it, I think you got to be wary about Jonu Smith. Um, things have been kind of like it taking a downturn. He only two targets this week. Um, for a tight end that was massively involved early in, like in September, uh, like like during the second half of October, things have just started taking a slow downturn, and and other other tight ends, and especially with you know tight ends being such a premium position, they're hot. it's really hard to get a, a good tight end for fantasy. It's kind of a shame to see Jonah Smith falling, but I think this might have a lot to do with with uh, Corey Davis emerging and AJ Brown being in there. Uh, Tannehill's starting to find these receivers, and he's, I don't know, he's kind of forgetting about Jonathan Smith. And in fact, uh, Jonathan Ferkser is starting to share his targets a lot more. And we saw that the previous week, where uh, Ferkser actually, you know, out, out fantasied him. So, I, I'm a little bit concerned about Jonu Smith. I think you can probably, uh, I think he's definitely, um, I don't, I, th- I think I would consider him a buy low candidate. Because there might be something missing for him, but on the whole, I'm I'm a little bit panicked. And actually, I own him in the F6P league, and I'm I'm actually kind of worried about Johnny Smith because uh, I think there's other. I think this. I just don't understand the decline here in 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 targets and looks that he's getting from Town Hill. Thoughts on Johnny Smith? Uh, John, sorry, I keep doing that, Johnny. Uh, yeah, Johnny Smith. Like you said, really hot start to the season. But he hasn't been the same since he injured his ankle. Uh, I didn't watch the Titans game um, because it's the Titans versus the Bengals, and I had other games to watch. But uh, I don't, so I don't know if he looks healthy. Uh, The player updates say he does look healthy, so it might just be you know reintegrating back into the offense, or you know, like you said, the emergence of Corey Davis. But uh, I will say that Jonu Smith does block on a lot of plays, so that right away takes away his you know target opportunity kind of thing if he's blocking on half the plays he's uh half the plays he's in for and maybe maybe the titans needed a blocker um they lost an offensive lineman a couple weeks ago right so ah. that does that does line up with with uh, smith not getting as many targets because they just need to keep him in there as a blocker what are we doing with him uh i wouldn't drop him just yet like you said tight ends are premium and he's shown he can be good if given the targets so i'm not dropping him but if you're not the type of manager that wants to hold two tight ends, uh, then if you can find somebody else on the way on the wire that you know has a better road to consistent targets, you can drop him. Personally, I'm not doing it until I can see uh, for another couple weeks to see what happens with it. Right. Ah, uh, and uh, that uh, takes care of our moving on up and panic. So so so. It's time for... Come on, cue Mr. it up. Unlimited. Gotta be unlimited. Yes, Mr. Unlimited. You gotta be unlimited. And you gotta be unlimited to be Mr. Unlimited. And last week, uh, of course, as I say, we had a bye week. And uh, I just stuck in uh, Justin Herbert. So uh, we don't have Kevin to pick. So we gonna, we're going to have to debate this one out to find out uh, who is Mr. Unlimited. I think yeah, is Dalvin th- Cook really not going to win this? Like, I think Dalvin Cook has to win this. I don't think there's going to be a real a real debate here, right? I don't know. Dalvin Cook had four touchdowns. He had hundreds. He single handedly beat the Packers. DK Metcalf had 168 yards and two touchdowns. Okay, Cook had 100. Cook had over 200 yards and four touchdowns, and again single handedly beat the Packers. He outscored the Packers himself, 28 to 22. Mm. So. Dalvin Cook is the easy choice here. DK had a good game, but, you know, 
Dalvin had a oh, much better DK, game. DK had a quote unquote good game. He had a good game. Man, just a good game. And just, just like, I was on Twitter. You just see Twitter. Like, people are just like, there's Eagles fans. Like, okay, look, look, look. I'm going to tell you something. I, I'm, I'm going to put this up. I gotta make. I gotta make some. Uh, I gotta make some argument for DK. You're probably right. Dolphins gonna win it, but I want to make a case at least for my guy DK Mack. Not just because I own him in our league. Well, maybe I have something. But I, I. But I love. Him. I love this player. I like Dolphin Cook too. But uh, he's probably gonna win. But I want to read this to you as soon as I as soon as I get this off Twitter. But now <laughs> I didn't realize this at the time. But um, um, I'm gonna find this. Just give me a minute. It won't take long. You can sing the praises all you want of uh, DK of, of Dalvin Cook, but um... Dalvin Cook was the first player since the 1970 NFL AFL merger to score his team's first four touchdowns. So he's setting like he's making history out here. He's setting records, and you're not going to give him Mister Unlimited. Come on, I'm not. G- Come on, I, I said I'm not going to not give him, but I got to make a case for for, for DK Metcalf. Right, I have to, and uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do that right now as we as we speak. Um, and here it is. Uh, right here are here is the 2019 NFL Draft wide receivers drafted before DK Metcalf. These were these were these were wide receivers drafted ahead of DK Metcalf in 2019. You ready? Marquise Brown, not bad, still okay. And Keel Harry, Debo Samuel. A.J. Brown, no, he's okay. There's Michael Hardman, Jake J. Arcega Whiteside, Paris Campbell, and get this, this guy was drafted ahead of D.K. Metcalf, Andy Isabella. <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean, that's cool, but it still doesn't make him Mr. Unlimited. This is not a case for him being Week 8's Mr. Unlimited. <laughs> but you can see the, 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 the advance that he's done. He's, he's you know, uh, so, I had to make a claim, but, uh. Now, I'm afraid you're right. I have to concede that uh, Dalvin Cook four uh, four touchdown days. I mean, if I'm gonna give, if we give Derrick Henry, because we look we, Derrick Henry in week six, if we give Derrick Henry a 200 plus game, right? If the 200 plus game is, I mean, Derrick Henry his his monster week in week six, it, it would be it would be wrong not to give Dalvin Cook the uh, Mr. Unlimited this. Week. So I'm gonna have to agree with you, sadly, but it's going to have to be. Um, it's gonna have to Dalvin Dalvin Cook is. Mr. Unlimited for week eight. Mr. Unlimited. Gotta be unlimited. I'm a reasonable thinker, but uh, I had to make some sort of case for came out. But I'm not just not just that, but I kind of wanted to put out put that out there, something that I read. But uh, can you believe it? Andy Isabella draft ahead of became Mecca. Does that make sense? That does make sense. Uh, I mean, there are like four other guys on that list that you could also talk about. Isabella's better than White Arshiega Whiteside. <laughs> uh, I mean, and Kill Harry looks terrible. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Kill and off. Kill Harry was like consensus ranked higher than DK. It wasn't just like oh, the Patriots reached. Like Harry was consensus ranked higher than Metcalf. So like <laughs> it's it's a whatever. It's uh, was it just being able to adjust to the NFL, the pure physical skill. And sometimes just people outsmart themselves. Um, but again, you, you know, Metcalf was getting comparisons to Dor- uh, your your guy, uh, Doriel Beckham <laughs> Green. Uh, yeah. I know. Yeah, that's mean. your guy. Uh, uh, getting yeah. many comparisons to him. I and... know, but the thing is, is DK Metcalf can actually uh, run routes. And, and well, that was his problem coming out of college. People didn't think he could s- run routes. See a, he can see a chalkboard. He knows, like. Doriel Green Beckham, he didn't, the thing about him is that he was a, he didn't go to, I don't think he had a proper college education. I think he's just a guy that, he was just a raw kind of uh, beastie kind of guy. So, I mean, it's kind of a shame what happened to Doriel Green Beckham, but he, you know, but I don't know, DK Metcalf and AJ Brown for that matter. Uh, uh, those two freaks from Ole Miss, they, they're just, they're just, I don't know what to think about them. Cause AJ Brown, don't, don't, don't sleep on him. He's going to catch up. In fact, uh, both of them, uh, um, they cheer each other on. They're both uh, DK Metcalf's a, a Titans fan and uh, AJ Brown's a Seahawks fan. So they're they're good friends and they they so they they share in their fortunes uh, with with their things. It was just kind of cool. So uh, so that's kind of nice. Anyways, John, let's talk about the waiver wire this week. We gotta we gotta uh, 
we got to sort out who we're picking up this week. Uh, you know, <clears throat> well, we talked about Jordan Wilkins. Obviously, he's a top pickup. But is there anybody else that we should be picking up on from Reavers on on the on the running back side besides? Yeah, uh, we talked about Gus Edwards already, so I'll leave him off. But Jamichael Hasty uh, is in is a must add at this point. He's just under 50% owned in Yahoo, I believe, or rostered in Yahoo, I believe. But Tevin Coleman got hurt again. I believe this might have been a high ankle sprain or a knee issue. Uh, same knee he hurt earlier, so he's going to be out for a while. Uh, Jerick McKinnon is, according to Kyle Shanahan, battling tired legs, so he's not going to do a whole lot. So Hasty is going to be the guy till R- Raheem Mostert comes back. So can you believe that? Ba- can you believe that battling tired legs? You well, to be fair, he hasn't sp- played an NFL game in two years. I, it's acceptable that he's tired. <laughs> he hasn't used his legs in two years. He's just been rehabbing, so it makes sense. Well, yeah. Okay, I don't know. I don't you can't know. get up off. You can't get up off the rehab table after two years and expect to run like you did. And he's two years older, right? So, but he had that it, big game. He seemed perfectly fine. What is that? Just one game? Just <clears throat> yeah. I'm wore him out. Like yeah, you go work out and you you, you get sore. That's that's what happens, <laughs> especially uh, after a two year uh, layoff. Uh, you know, here's the point. This is the thing I got about about picking up 49ers running backs is that you just don't know what's going to happen. They're all hurt. There's only two of them still healthy, and one of them has tired uh, legs. It doesn't matter. <laughs> the process of elimination. Uh, this is the only one who can run. He's the only like, one left. Like, like it doesn't matter. Like it doesn't matter. Shanahan will get. Uh, he'll pull up somebody like Joe Dingleberry from the from the from the practice squad, and he'll be in there. You know what I mean? It just doesn't matter. It seems like. You know well, what I mean? Nobody's, pick, nobody's picking up Joe Dingleberry, so Michael Hasty <laughs> is the pickup. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's like I can't trust these 49ers running backs for for anything. At least I don't think so. Anyways, another name I put on the end now. Damian Harris had uh, his first 100 yard. In fact, it was exactly 100 yards, I believe. Damian Harris. Uh, uh, I think so. I don't know exactly how many yards now, he had. Uh, how far down your waiver wire uh, pickups you gonna, are you going to go with him? Because, you know, Cam I mean, Newton. I didn't write about him just because he's fifth, four, or already 47% rostered. I just assumed he was owned in most, in most leagues already. Um, All right. Is he? 47%. So just over half of leagues he's available. But this is, uh, I'm going to say this is a bit of an aberration week. Um, the Bills run defense is not good. Uh, and Oh, it seemed to be. It no, seemed the to be Bills right run at, defense is not good. Nope, it was excellent. Are, it was excellent uh, because look what happened nope. to Cam Newton at the end of the game. Yeah, he dropped the ball. He got the ball punched out after a 17-yard run. That's not a good, that's not good run defense. That uh, is good Bills run, run defense. defense. No, the Bills defense as a whole is not good this year. Uh, Harris is going to lead the the backfield in touches, but he won't be as efficient uh, as he was this week. So, like, he'll get the touches, but don't expect 100 yards every week because the Bills run defense made him look way better, uh, way better than he actually is, like, way better than he'll produce for the rest of the year. Mm. I want to talk about that fumble, though, for a bit. It was a good play by Zimmer. I mean... How much? Uh, what else are you gonna talk about? It was a great, great play by the, by Zimmer to punch that out because the Pats had a lot of momentum and they absolutely just won the game with that. Very it, well, obviously. They should have tied the game. I mean, I had a. That's they had the, two. Ti- yeah, two timeouts left. I got a feeling they were gonna win that. That's enough to make Bill Belichick turn turn as blue as the Patriots blue on their uniform. You know, like uh, <laughs> that, 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 that kind of thing just drives. Bill Belichick drink that sort of stuff. I mean, he hates fumble, especially when he's. You think he'll trust uh, Cam Newton running the ball now? Yeah, what's he gonna do? Let Jared Stidham throw the ball again? No, 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 no. I meant, I meant, no. Is he gonna say no? You, you, you throw the ball out. You, you go out of the pocket. You throw the ball. You don't run for it. No, Cam, Cam running the ball is the Pats' most successful play. Like, that's just the most efficient, only way they're moving the ball now. Oh, sure. Lost them the game. Yeah, they wouldn't have been in the game without it. Like, it's, you, you know, you get, you get a great defensive play made against you. You can't blame the process because he gained 15 yards on the play. He got them within the 20-yard line, I think close to the 15, uh, with that run. And without that great play, we're talking about Pats tie the game or possibly win the game. Like, just because there's a 
mishap on the last play doesn't mean you go away from what's gaining you yards. So you don't think uh, Belichick's going to dial him back on those plays, eh? I don't think Belichick is going to take away his most efficient runner and start putting the ball in the hands of uh, Demir Damian Burr Harris. and and yeah and Burkhead. Like it's not happening. All right. Anyways, let's move on to wide receiver. We picking up wide receiver pickups. Um, who do I have this week? Jacoby yeah. Myers. Speaking of the Patriots, uh, with everybody else hurt, Harry's still hurt. Edelman is still hurt. Uh, Jacoby Myers had ten targets and he just seemed to be open. Uh, I'm not sure if this was because of the Bills, but. Yeah, he just seemed to be open, and Cam was looking in his direction a lot because who else you can look at on this on that team? So well, uh, it seemed to yeah. me that Bird was making the plays. <sighs> Myers was the guy. He had the ten targets. He had six catches. Led the team in both. Uh, I think Bird had one big play, from what I remember. Two, but no, Myers is going to be the volume guy. Mm. Uh, yeah, Bird had three catches, thirty nine yards. Like sure, mm-hmm. on four targets, so much lower volume. Uh, Myers is going to be the guy. All right. And I noticed that you have Curtis Samuel as the other guy. Uh, is, is that it? Just Curtis Samuel? And- uh, there are others. Those are the two uh, that I had off the top of my head. Um, uh, Corey Davis, Jalen Rager coming off IR. Uh, right. Only 24% rostered. Uh, Fulgham is going to be the wide receiver one because he's been incredible. Yeah. But Rager just came off IR, scored a touchdown. Uh, they, give him a, they give him a rushing attempt too, so they are trying to get him the ball, All right. uh, which is a good sign. So... Widely available, somebody who was uh, thought to be the Eagles' wide receiver one, even with Alshon Jeffrey and Deshaun Jackson in the lineup. So, um, no uh, Jalen Guyton's there. No, no, uh, obviously no Marvin Jones. You don't like him. Yeah. Marvin Jones is like owned in fifty-ish percent of leagues. That's not a, uh, all right. It's, okay, he's it's, it's too too widely owned. Well, I thought he would be dropped a lot by now. No, he was, but he was picked up after last week. He had eighty yards or something last week, so he got picked up for bye week fill-ins. There was a guy in. Uh, SFBX, he picked up Nelson Aguilar. And he, didn't he, got, he didn't even have a target. Nelson Aguilar, yeah. after doing all that stuff. Was it, Aguilar, don't don't Aguilar, tell me. It was like, man, did you he have, was the wide receiver one for four straight weeks, and then all of a sudden, no targets. Now, tell it's me nuts. honestly, did you have Nelson Aguilar in your column last week? Yeah, of course I did. He had a touchdown in four straight games. I'd be insane not to put him in there. So now, how do you feel about National Aguilar? <laughs> I feel bad about that. I feel bad about ever trying to watch that game. I didn't ever think a Raiders Browns game would be so defensively oriented, but mm. here we are. At least you're honest. That counts for something. Um, I mean, it's out on the internet. I posted it. I can't go back and say no. I lied <laughs> and go edit it. <laughs> it's up that. there. I know that. I know that. But at least you're honest about your mistake. As am I. It's. That's not a mistake. The process was correct. I blame John Gruden. The process was correct. The process was okay. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, but getting back to Curtis Samuel, yeah, monster uh, Thursday night game, and it was uh, kind of surprising. Um, I like Curtis Samuel. I, I've always kind of thought that he's one of those... I think he's kind of on the wrong team, actually. He'd be better... I don't know who he'd be... Uh, the, I don't know. I'd have to think about it, but there is another team that I think he'd be better see for. But... He's okay. I mean, like, when he's used the way he was in, in the Panthers game, I think, I think you know, he's definitely a good pickup. Huh? Uh, how many leagues, uh, what, what's the percentage on him? Uh, Curtis Samuel? Yeah. 20. All right. 20% rostered. All right. All right. Uh, moving on to tight ends. Uh, yeah, we, with Kittle out, I guess it's Ross Dwelly. I mean, really? Yeah, I mean, Kittle's out. Reed is still hurt, and Dwelly cut a touchdown. Yeah, but Garoppolo's uh, out too. So Nick Mullins throws much <laughs> throw is throws much more wildly than Garoppolo. So you're going to get more passing attempts out of the team now, especially with all the running backs hurt, right? So yeah, you're not interested. And, and Debo still hurt. We're not interested in Kendrick Bourne. Or- he had a big day. Uh, I mean, he had his. He had a good day. It was the best. The best game of the season for him. Eight catches, eighty yards. I don't see that kind of volume coming again. Nah, I just don't because. Know. Uh, yeah, the, the the Niners are trying to play catch up, so I don't see that kind of volume coming to him again. Yeah, yeah, if they're if they're playing catch up, and uh, you also mentioned Nick Mullins in the in the in the waiver quarter. I'm getting a six. You got Drew Locke in the waivers quarterbacks. What are you thinking? Uh, Drew Locke gets the Falcons next week. Oh, if yeah, oh, this is Drew oh, Locke I gets, do streaming. I see Drew Locke. Well, well, QBs are just owned. Everybody owns two QBs now, and I'm looking for people 35 percent rostered and under. So the the pickings are. Th- Thin. 
<laughs> they really are, aren't they? If you're under thirty five percent owned, yes, the pickings are thin. Drew Locke had a good game. Uh it was his first multi touchdown game of the year this week, and now he gets the Falcons. Yeah, I'll take the momentum. Sure. I mean I'd rather have Nick Foles. Oh no. Oh no, the Bears looked awful. The Bears looked no, absolutely no, awful. No, 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 no. They look good. They look no. good. In fact, Foles this week, number... Foles did pretty good, actually. He's not good every week. You can't start him every He's not every quarterback, obviously. Yeah, Foles still hasn't had a 20-point game this year. He had 17 this week. Locke outscored him this week. And We're talking no, bye get... weeks here. We're in bye weeks. You need a guy. Yeah, Drew Locke against the Falcons. I'd rather have Nick, Nick Foles, Foles against and, the Titans. and Kirk Against Cousins. the Titans? Against the Titans, no chance. Well, no, not. He's gonna get to throw the ball fifteen times because Henry's gonna just run it down their throats. Oh, they play the Titans, eh? Bears playing Titans. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, Absolutely forward. not. You're not playing Nick Foles over Drew Locke against the Falcons. All right. Okay. All right. That's our waivers. It's time to well, in order to pick up these players, right? You gotta drop players. So, John. You got a guy on your roster that's been kind of just been hanger on. Says, Who's on the bubble for you that can be popped? Yeah, uh, Mike Gusecki's getting dropped. Uh, I thought this season he was going to like continue his breakout from the end of last year. Uh, he's still running a lot of routes out of the slot, but he has one catch in the last two weeks, and Tua uh, struggled mightily. <laughs> um, so I guess until... You know, Tua improves. Uh, you can't really trust Gaseki because the volume's just not going to be there uh, for him to do a lot unless he catches a random touchdown like he did in week three where he had one catch and a 15-yard touchdown. So, yeah, Gaseki's droppable. Just too inconsistent. Yeah, uh, I kind of agree. I think I think he was a drop for me even last week. So, things are, it's still going south for him. Uh, my guy... Uh, this week is T.Y. Hilton. I think it's pretty well known by now that you should have dropped uh, T.Y. Hilton. I mean, the, the, pro- the, th- the weird thing about him is that he's on the field a lot. And and we're getting like, we're getting like, uh, this time, th- last week, I mean, it could change. I mean, they're playing Baltimore next week, but uh, so you're not really hoping for a lot. And then they got, and then they got, uh, then the Colts have Tennessee and then Green Bay and then Tennessee again. So, T.Y. Hilton, I think you can make room on your roster if you remove T.Y. Hilton. It's just not happening this year, even though um, uh, he's on the field. Like, what? What is his percentages? Like the last, he was only he was only uh, on the field for thirty six percent of the snaps, and yet in the previous two games before the bye, he was ninety five percent and ninety four. And you kind of expect him to get back on the field because. I don't know, just nothing's happening for T.Y. Hilton this year. And and actually, to be quite honest, for none, none, you can't even get Zach Pascal to do anything. And there was this Johnson guy, you know, you're kind of thinking, well, maybe. But there's really nothing, uh, there's really nothing, nothing happening with the Colts. Um, as I've mentioned before, that there is no Colts receivers that you can sort of rely not even a sleeper really wouldn't you say but uh would you drop can you drop would you drop ty yeah even when he's playing he's not been great and now he's dealing with injuries yeah that's i think that's a that's a drop for me as well okay um spec ads my favorite my favorite my favorite and i like your spec ad give it to me give it to me give it to me i like this guy uh, got. spec ad darnell mooney uh bears. Love it. i know you like the bears offense i am not a fan of the bears offense i'm not but... a fan of the offense but i'm a fan of this guy i think he's i think he's getting you think he's getting the good looks from uh falls uh yeah mooney this week uh 69 yards i believe and a touchdown uh although 50 of those 69 yards were on one play uh where he beat janoris jenkins uh, and got 50 yard gain uh his touchdown was a three yard touchdown catch um all year long, he's been consistent. It's been six straight games where he had at least five targets. And he finally broke through in this one. Unfortunately, this is also a game where Anthony Miller led the team in targets. Um, yes. So I know that. Miller's been, yeah, Miller's been in and out all year just in terms of his targets and what he's doing. But I think Mooney's been the more consistent, you know, number two option behind Allen Robinson. And 
once the offense opens up a little bit more, then I think Mooney's going to be the, uh, the 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 number two option there. Well, I got to see more of this game because uh, this was in, in the late window, and I watched Red Zone, and you were able to see a lot more of that. But what I look up, it's not just targets. It's actually the quality of targets, and I noticed that Darnell Mooney was getting the quality targets. He was getting the good targets. Not even uh, not even Robinson. Robinson was getting the hard targets, and and even um, uh, Miller wasn't getting but. Um, Darnell Mooney was getting the premium targets, and they're trying to make this guy a star. And I mentioned this in my I mentioned this in my column for the uh, for the week eight preview. And people, you gotta watch, you gotta go and see my uh, you gotta see my uh, my column, my my weekend preview. Man, it's a good, it's, I do a good job. I got hardly any hits. Come on, come on, start clicking, start clicking, and read my article. It's it's not bad. <laughs> I mean, someone reads it. I mean, he's like, what would I get? Like about 50 people reading it? And other people read. And yet other people want, all they want to look at is like, uh, rest of season, my rest of season rankings. They probably don't even read that. They probably just go straight to, more, to what I'm thinking about in the rankings. For some reason, they trust me on that. But anyways, next guy, uh, is my guy here. Uh, well, I'm going to go off the board. Like, like I say, because Galladay is out now, and since you don't like Marvin Jones, I'm going to take the other Marvin. Marvin Hall as a spec ad. I, I would say you can stash Marvin Hall, see what he does. Um, not a lot of targets, granted, uh, but that could change. He's always, I notice that whenever I see Marvin Hall, he's always getting the good, he's always getting the good targets, like red zone targets. He's good, he's, you know, he's good for touchdowns and things like that. I mean, if you need a flex, we're in bye weeks after all. Um, Marvin Hall, yeah, um, pick him up, uh, slot him in if you need a spot start for a, for a bye week and, uh, he's good to go. Thoughts, Jono? Yeah, no, it, it makes sense. It's a good spec ad. If somebody else gets hurt, uh, Hall's going to be the guy, but. Yeah, no, it definitely makes a lot of sense there to to go with Hall. I wouldn't. I would. What about the what about the dude from from week one? Uh, Quintez Cephas. Quintez. Oh no, him. No, no, no. Yeah, he was your guy in week one. He was not. He was your guy after his week one performance. He was not. He was not. <laughs> he was not my guy. Definitely your guy after week one. I'm pretty he was, sure he was your spec out after week one. I don't, I don't know. I have to check the tapes. But I, maybe yeah. I don't know. I don't think so. I'm uh, like almost sure he. You definitely did bring him up in week one, though. After week one stuff, hundred percent, you did. Nah, nah. You're probably thinking of Olamide Zacchaeus <laughs> or whatever his name is of the Falcons or something. This is, this is why we need a technical guy to to, uh, to roll back the tape uh, uh, as we're doing this we'll live. We'll have to find out, anyways. We're at the end of the show. <laughs> Final thoughts for going into week nine. Week nine. Any games you're looking forward to? Um, uh, not games in particular. Um. Just, I'm looking forward to see at what point Michael Thomas is going to come back and actually play. Boy, that's a, <laughs> um, that's a thought. Just what a what a season for him. Uh, plays half a game, gets hurt, and then hurts his hamstring in practice. Punching a teammate. I don't know what's going on with him. Just, uh, I'm waiting to see when he can play again. I really don't. You know, I don't like that. You know, because that I don't know. You just don't like bad blood in the in the, that's bad locker room stuff, and I. I I kind of worry about that sort of thing because it means... Oh, but bad locker room stuff. I can't wait to see Antonio Brown play. Thank oh, you. No. You just reminded me. Bad locker room <laughs> stuff. Antonio Brown is playing again. I cannot wait. Yeah. Oh, uh, somebody was complaining that Josh Gordon, like, uh, it's taken them, like, it's supposed to take 120 days for them to, or something like that, to, uh, to be uh, clear. Yeah. Uh, the only thing, the only thing, I, the only reason I could say that they wouldn't have answered is because Josh Gordon actually didn't, su- didn't submit his reinstatement application when he said he did. And, um, but who knows? I wouldn't put it past Goodell to skirt his own rules and keep Gordon out of the league for whatever reason. But when Gordon comes back, you bet you're going to be hearing about it. Oh, for crying out loud. No. I mean, it's like, the guy, come on, John. The guy cannot. The guy, the, the guy fills the bong, man. He's, he, He's going to yeah, send David Moore to obscurity. There was this third option, there third was option this, behind Metcalf and Lockett. You there, bet. There was this hilarious gif on, uh, on, uh, there was this hilarious gif about Josh Gordon, like, uh, looking for reinstatement, and there was it was I think it was a scene from uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High when they come out they come out of a, a Volkswagen bus like you know one of those old ones, and uh, and they open the doors and you know they come roll <laughs> they come rolling out and smoke you know pot smoke is billowing out of the 
And, and that's 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 Josh Gordon waiting to hear his uh, about his reinstatement. But oh man, the guy can't stay off the weed. I mean, I don't know why. I mean, especially playing in Seattle too, where weed laws are a little bit more looser than in the rest of the United States. You know. It's an addiction. You know. it, it's just, it's an it's a legitimate addiction. You know, it's uh, fortunately his life didn't completely go off the rails like Justin Blackman's did. No, uh, for a different addiction. Different. But if Alden Smith can come back and play and you know rehabilitate himself after what he was doing then josh gordon should have that same chance okay because uh-huh. josh gordon wasn't actively putting people in danger with his actions you know what i mean yeah. so it's not, I don't know, still a bit of a diva though he's so, not a diva he that's, is no that's not a diva oh he's come on Did you, his, yeah, he's not complaining yeah. about touches do you remember the? do you remember the hard knocks the who jackson one like when he comes in the building they kind of treat him with kit gloves like oh he, he's here you know, like the yes. the one is he, here. The... His his actions do not make him a diva. Diva well, is like Michael Thomas, Odell Beckham kind of stuff. You know, like or ooh, Josh. That brings up Des Bryant, actually. Oh yes, I uh, I wish Kevin was here to talk about this because I am so excited to see Des Bryant on the field again. <laughs> it uh, could be. This so is so excited. crazy. Antonio Brown, Des Bryant, and even Josh freaking. Des Bryant was a legitimate receiver, and I then was, he got hurt. It just wasn't the signed, and then you know got hurt, tore his Achilles when he got when he finally did get signed. Just and you know the Ravens need some receiving help. So, like Kevin says, uh, he thinks that Des was signed to actually be a decent part of the offense. Uh, so I'm excited to see how the Ravens will use him. That is what I will say. And that's how we're gonna end this show on. <laughs> Good luck with week nine, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the Fantasy Edge podcast as much as we did presenting it to you. Uh, next week, John was in the chair, and uh, I don't know. We'll see about getting an uh, getting an extra in here, maybe. And uh, but uh, it could be just us again. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, so for Jonathan Chan, I'm Tavilla Fantasy Six Pack and see you next week on the Fantasy Edge. Take care, everyone.